Hello and welcome. I'm Baz Kind of a commercial director at Wellington. And in today's session, I'll be providing a quick overview of the Microsoft Roadmap app that you get as part of Microsoft Project. Feel free to ask questions through the Q&A panel and my contact details will be coming up at the end. Before looking at Roadmap, a little bit about Wellington. So we're a project management consulting firm based in Windsor with offices in Ireland and Spain. And as you can see on the slide, we offer a wide variety of services that span consultancy, training and technology. We also have managed to collect a few badges along the journey. So today we're a Microsoft Gold certified PPM partner, an ABM accredited training provider, an accredited P3M3 assessor, and also an approved G Cloud supplier. We also run and compile the annual state of project management report, the latest version of which is now available on our website. And we also deliver the annual future PMO conference. Further details on all of this at wellington.co.uk. And since starting in 2001, we've been fortunate enough to have worked with quite an eclectic mix of clients. Again, head over to the website where you're going to find lots of case studies. Just follow the link that's displayed at the bottom. So let's get back on topic and talk about Microsoft Roadmap. So this app was launched just over a year ago and it's available now within organizations that have the appropriate licensing and where the app has actually been switched on by the Office 365 admin. And I'll be running through that process in just a moment. You can see Microsoft's description of roadmap being displayed at the bottom of the screen. And in a nutshell, roadmap provides a joined view of projects and double work initiatives from across a number of Microsoft solutions that include Microsoft Project Online, Project for the Web, and Azure Boards as well. Now, looking ahead, Microsoft are planning to extend the solution to bring in data from third-party apps such as Jira. But getting back to Roadmap, the typical audience for this is probably going to be senior execs or anyone really that wants to understand at a high level project uh, timelines and statuses without having to delve into detailed Gantt charts. So I'm going to be providing a demo shortly, but before I do, I'll provide an overview of licensing and how to switch it on in the first place. So from a licensing perspective, we have actually a few options. For those wanting read write access, users have to have Project Plan 3 or Project Plan 5 in place. Whilst those that only require view access to the roadmap, they simply need one of the qualifying Office 365 plans in place. For example, E5, E3, E1, or one of the multitude of other supported plans. If you want to check whether or not you've got access to one of those uh, plans in place, simply follow the link displayed, and that gives you a full breakdown of all of the supported plans. I've also listed here some basic instructions on how to switch on roadmap, along with a link to a page that provides much more detailed instructions. However, I'll quickly run through the process now and then I'll get on with a demo. We're gonna start here. So as a start of a 10, I'm actually going to show you how you would switch on Roadmap in the first place. So in order to do this, you have to be a Office 365 administrator for your organization. If you're not, then I mean, you will not be able to get access to this particular menu. So when you go into Office 365, we want to head over to the admin portal, which I've got access to here. And once you're in there, you're going to head over to settings. And from there, you're going to look down the list and find project, which we have listed here. You then click on it. And here we see the ability to turn on roadmap for your organization. Uh, you can also switch on project for the web here as well. That's out of scope for today. Lots of uh, webinars already available on YouTube from uh, our YouTube channel, Wellington PPM. So if you do want to learn more about Project for the Web, there's lots of content on our YouTube channel. But again, that's how you would turn on Roadmap. And now that I've shown you how to turn it on, what we're going to do is just jump over to my actual demo environment so we can run through Roadmap itself. So in order to access Roadmap in the first place, there's a couple of ways in which you can head over into that direction and get access to it. We are going to click on the project icon. In fact, I've already done that earlier. So we've got here a screen called Project Home, and that's where you would head to once you click on that icon. 
and this really provides the end user with a aggregated view of all of the projects that they are either managing themselves or those that have been shared with them. Now, as well as being able to view projects that have been assigned to them, they can also access what are called roadmaps. So these are the high level overviews of what's going on across the project portfolio. So rather than go into an existing one, what I'm going to do is go in and create one from scratch. So today I'm going to be linking to three different applications. I'll link to Project Online first of all, then I'll be showing you how you can link through to Project for the Web, and I'll also link through to Azure Board just to give you that full overview of how we can get a single view of uh, work or initiatives that are underway across those uh, solutions. So step number one, in fact, I'm being signposted and it reminds me of that uh, paper clip that used to be uh, visible many, many years ago. And anyways, let's uh, ignore that. We're going to go in, add a row, and I'm going to give this a title. So I'm going to call this the Coho Health Assessment Project because that's the project that I'm going to link to. And then I'm going to connect through to that project. So I've got a couple of options here. I can either connect to a project that's in Project Online or Project for the Web or to Azure Board. So we will click on Project first. And when I go down the list, I can see all of the projects that are being managed across both project and project for the web. I can either search for the projects manually or I could simply type in the name of that project, which is what I'm going to do. And we're going to select that. And it's now going to go through and set up the relevant permissions. They've now been granted, so I can now connect. And as you will see, this is a really big time saver, especially when you consider that many people are pulling together views like the one that I'm about to produce now using tools like PowerPoint, which is quite time consuming and very manual. So I can now either go through and start searching for items within the project plan itself. So I could look for scope. So there we're going to add that in. So this is one way in which you can add items back into this. Let me just bring that menu down. OK. So I'm going to add this in for now, but there's another way in which I can bring projects in. Uh, so I'm going to do that as well. In fact, I've not assigned this to anybody yet. So let me assign this to Ted. I'm going to give that to Ted Danson. So now we've got our project set up. We can see the name of the project. We can see the owner of a project as well. And if I scroll along the list, you should be able to see that initial item that I pulled in before, which was scope. So again, you can add items by doing it manually, by searching for them here. Or what we can do is head over now to Project Online itself. So this is Project Online. This is the project that I've linked up so far. I'm going to go in and view in the browser. And we should now see the schedule loading up. So I can now pick and choose any one of these tasks or milestones to add into that view. I can either do this by selecting items manually. So I've selected scope, which is already in place, but I can also go in, add other items as required. So I'm just demonstrating how we do this now. So again, I've highlighted a couple of items there, but again, this is quite manual, uh, a bit time consuming. So an easier way in which to do it, especially when all you're trying to do is provide a overview of the plan rather than present the entire plan is go to outlines, knock that down to level one. I'm now going to select everything actually. Um, so let's go through and select it all. And from here, we're going to now go in and add to roadmap. So this will just take a moment. It's going to ask me which roadmap I want to link this to. So we will choose the untitled one because I've not yet given it a name. And we're going to add it in. So it's now been added. And when I close out and go back, we will be able to see this information load up. And in fact, whilst that's taking place, I'm just going to go in and call this uh, the webinar roadmap. So that's been done. Going to refresh the page now. And as if by magic, we should hopefully see the entire plan being displayed on the page. And there we go. So these are all of the tasks that we've just bought in from this particular uh, project. Now, I could also go in, add in milestones, and I'm going to do those by searching for those manually. So I'm going to look for things that are title complete. So we'll add in the analysis. 
I could also go in, add a few other items as well. In fact, I should have selected a few at the same time. Uh, so let's uh, select that. Uh, we're also going to bring in one more use for luck, pilot complete, and we can add those in. So now you can see the road mapping displayed and we can see the summary tasks that we selected from within the plan itself. And we can also see some of the milestones. So this is all very well and good. We've bought the data across and if the data now changes in the plan and we then refresh the roadmap, this data here is also going to be refreshed as well. But one of the great things about roadmap is the fact that it gives the end user the ability to go in and flag the status of those specific tasks. So this one here, the scope, we will say that this is on track. Analysis and requirements gathering will say this is on track. In fact, why don't we say that everything's on track for now? Aside from the pilot itself, we'll say that this is maybe at risk. Now, if I do want to go back to the plan, I can either navigate back to the open tab that I already have uh, being uh, made available at the top, or I can click on open details. And from here, I can see the connection. So I could just press that button there and it's going to reopen that plan. There we go. Closing out of this, we're also going to bring in a project now from a project for the web. So I'm going to go in, add another row. And this time we will call this project for the web. And I'm going to connect this to a existing project again. In fact, we'll have this project being uh, brought through, project for the web again. So that again is now going to connect to the project. It's going to get the permissions. And um, we can see the two ticks across both of those so we've got permissions now for the project roadmap and for the common data service which is where the data resides for project for the web click connect and the way in which we bring tasks in for project for the web differs very slightly to how it happens for project online so whereas with project online we've actually got to search for the tasks or we've got to go to the plan and then bring items back through with project for the web we can actually see all of the tasks listed out for us to go and select from. So I can either select things manually just by ticking the boxes, or I could search for uh, specific tasks. And that's quite handy where you've got a very lengthy project. I could, if I want to do a very quick select, so I could select all of the milestones, done. I could now go through and select all summary tasks. So I can do the same for top level tasks as well. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have filtered by type of task. And again, I could have manually selected, but we've selected everything. And we're now going to press the add button and we're going to see this project load up. And for this one, we're going to make Adele the owner, not the singer, but the agile coach, Adele. And uh, all of those items have now been added. And if I scroll along to the right time frame, we'll see that information load through. And again, it's exactly the same as Project Online. We can go in and we can color things in. So this one we'll say is on track. And again, we'll do this for quite a few. Uh, we'll say on track again. Might as well make something um, at uh, high risk. And there we go. And again, we see the milestones. We see the summary tasks. We see um, all of this information coming through at the click of a button. So, so far I've linked to Project Online. I've also linked to Project for the Web. For good measure, let's now go in and link to a Azure Boards project as well. So we'll call this one Contoso. Uh, I'm going to connect to Azure Boards. And it's going to present me with a list of projects that are available there. So we'll link to Contoso Air. And I have to warn you, the data set that I have available in Azure uh, Boards is not as rich as the uh, data sets that I have for project. But nevertheless, we will go through and connect up. And now that it's all connected, I can start selecting items. So in order to do this, I'm going to start typing in some uh, numbers that are going to bring up the relevant tasks from the boards that exist. Uh, let's select a few more. Uh, let's select one other. Uh, let's select from this as well. Have I got any others in there? Maybe, okay. So we've selected a few items. I'm going to press add. And again, I did warn you that the data set here is not going to be as rich. But when I navigate across now, you should see these tasks listed out in a single layer. See, I did warn you that the data set would not be that good, but uh, it's exactly the same as the other solutions. So we can go through and again, set the statuses. And of course, the more data you have in there, 
the better this is going to look. And at the moment, I'm zoomed right the way in and I can scroll along, but we can zoom in and out as required to get a better view. So this was Microsoft uh, Roadmap. This is, again is available with Project Online or Project for the Web, uh, as long as you've got plans three or five. Now, as well as viewing this information here, we can actually view roadmap information within Teams itself. And one of the things that I've not demonstrated so far actually is the fact that when you do create a brand new roadmap, you can link it up to a group, to an existing group or to a brand new one. So we're not going to create a new one, we're going to go and add to a group. And when I go in there, I'm going to select this group that I've already got to set up, it's Project for the Web. And when I do that and press add, you will see that the group numbers are going to jump up to six. So anyone that's a member of our group can now go and view this roadmap or interact with it as well. And if I jump over to Teams, so this is the project for the web group that I've um, just linked that uh, roadmap to. And if I go in now to add a new tab, it's going to give me the option to add in a roadmap. So there's roadmap, click on that. And when I come back here, I'm going to add the webinar roadmap to this uh, group. Save. It's now going to load up. And this is the same exact view that I was looking at a moment ago in roadmap. And if I was to make changes here, they would reflect back in the previous view and vice versa. If I make any changes in the roadmap itself, it's going to reflect here. I've got the ability to um, edit these items now as well, just as I did previously. And I can also zoom in and out and filter and go to specific dates. So guys, this was a very quick overview of Microsoft Roadmap, which again is available as part of Microsoft Project Plans 3 and 5, and in a view-only format with lots of other plans from Microsoft uh, as part of Office 365. So this again is a big time saver and many organizations that have already got Project Online in place or Project for the Web, surprisingly not everyone has actually turned this feature on. So again, if you can track down a Office 365 administrator, setting this up literally takes minutes. So here we are, and uh, as I mentioned before, that's the end of this very short session. I'm sure you've got questions, so please do use the Q&A panel now to post them and I'll respond to them as soon as I can. Alternatively, don't hesitate to get in touch using the details displayed. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can also do that. You can either search for me or you can just scan that QR code using your uh, LinkedIn app on your iPhone or your Android device. Please do also check out the Wellington website and do follow us on LinkedIn where we regularly announce new events. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is where this webinar is actually going to be tending up a bit later on today alongside lots of other videos.